Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. In this video, we're going to be making something similar to what we built a few months back in our channel, which is a flipbook. Now, the last time that we built it, we built using HTML and jQuery. But in this video, we're going to be making it using React and a popular library, which is pretty old uh, to make stuff like these, which is React page flip. Now, the source code of this video is in the description, so you guys can download that and play with it. So here we have the project. So here we have the book for the Pokemon. Uh, so this is basically the hardcover. Let's click, it opens up. You can drag the pages and they turn, it's pretty nice. And you can close the book. So it's pretty nice uh, and it's pretty smooth as well. So yeah, this is what we're gonna be building in this video. So, and it's also responsive. So if I were to show you on different screen size, as you can see, it's responsive as well. So yeah. So without more delay, let's get started and let's learn to build this. So here I am in my cursor wherein I have initialized a React project using Beat. And so here we have a couple of things on the screen. So first we have our app.jsx. Now keep in mind that I've cleaned up everything. So whatever stuff is there in the default. So I've just removed everything. So now we have this app.jsx, which has this container, which I've styled in the CSS, just to give it the width and height of entire screen, basically 300%, and then center everything using justify content center and align items to center. And then we have here the book component, which will be the meat of the video. So basically this is the component wherein we're gonna be adding the book effect using a library called as HTML flipbook. Now, if you haven't heard about this, it's a pretty old library, which is used to make flipbooks using React. Now to install it, if you're using NPM, you can just install NPM install React page flip. I'm using Yarn, so I've just added that using Yarn. So to make a simple flipbook, so this is basically what you need. You basically need to first import it and then add this component within that you just add divs and then each individual divs are basically the pages now here keep in mind that whenever you're creating a flipbook you need to give the width and height this is mandatory if you do not give a width and height this won't show up on the screen so there's that so here first what i'm going to be doing is let's go grab this and let's paste it in here just to see what's actually uh, happens so here if I just save it so this is how it looks now the background is dark so just to get it working I just scroll down and here I just add uh, the class of demo page and would have the background set as white and then the color of the text as black let's save and there we go. So now, as you can see, I'm able to scroll from one page to other, and that's basically it. So that's all that you need to do. Now, this is also responsive. So if I were to open up uh, the mobile screen, so as you can see, this is pretty responsive. See, it looks good. So yeah, that's the basic stuff that you need to keep in mind. And yeah, that's it, I guess. So now we're going to be making the Pokemon. So what I'm going to be doing is uh, let's leave it be. So here I'm going to be removing the stuff that I pasted. I'll add the HTML flipbook. I'll give it wisdom height and also I'll give it max shadow opacity, which is basically the shadow that you see when you flip the pages. And then also do you do we really want to show the shadow? Well, obviously we want to show so we have the draw shadow as true. Now by default, you don't really need to give anything. It just works automatically, but I'm just specifying here some stuff. And then also, do we want to show the cover? Now what is a cover? So if you come to their page, you'd see that here they have a demo that is showing up. So when you set the cover, the the way the page flips is different compared to the regular pages. So we want to have a cover, which is basically the first and the last page. So we have the show cover as true. And then we want to have the size as fixed. So by default, the size is fixed. Now, if you want to stretch it as the same as the parent, so you can have this 
instead of fixed you can change it to stretch now after that is done we're gonna have the page the first page will have the background is transparent um well obviously we're gonna be overriding this with the css that we have and then inside of that we have the page content we're gonna just call it cover and then here we have the pokemon logo and that's it for the cover now keep in mind that i have the css for this already written so i'm not going to be diving too deep into the css what's in there and what's not because if you guys have been following me for a while you would know that these stuff are pretty easy and obviously even if you are not following me you would obviously know that these stuffs are pretty simple so yeah i'm going to be leaving it at that so we have the logo done now we're going to be adding the other pages so instead of manually adding each individual divs for the other pages here i have an array wherein i have all the information about the different pokemons now these ids and the types names and all the other stuff i basically got this from pokedex so i'll be just the way that we're going to be having the image is basically if you have seen pokedex all they do is the id of the pokemon is basically the name of the image so we're going to be just changing the id and then we're going to be getting a new pokemon so that's the basic way of getting the images so here instead of mapping uh i mean instead of having divs so what we're going to be doing is we're going to be mapping through this array so we have this array we're going to be mapping through it and for each pokemon and the pokemon data we're going to be creating a page we're going to be giving it a key just so that the react down knows that it's a unique page and then we're going to be adding the page content within that we have the page we have the pokemon container which has the image now the image is the url the base url is going to be same for every pokemon the only thing that's going to change is the pokemon id so yeah then we have the name so basically for the pokemon info we have the name we have the pokemon number which is the unique id for the pokemon and then we have the types now we also have the types here so we're going to be mapping through the types here as well so let's map through let's add those in the span tag with the class name of this and let's add the type and then we have the description so we're going to paste the description which is this i'm going to map through and paste it just like that and let's save and i'll yeah looks good let's refresh again so you gotta have to keep in mind that whenever you do some changes to this you need to refresh or else it's going to show the previous ui so to basically re-render it you basically it's a good idea to like refresh or else you won't see the changes that you have done on the ui for this specific component so yeah as you can see it's it's pretty smooth and also if you look at the cover pages uh, the way they move is a bit different compared to how the regular pages move so yeah yeah so that's it for this video hope this was fun i i made a video a few few months back uh when i taught something similar so you guys had issues regarding how you could add multiple pages so this time we're using react to simplify some stuff if you want to add a new page you basically add another object here and it's going to give you a new page or if you're manually creating separate divs so make sure to add another div and it's going to give you another page so that's how you do it and for the responsiveness it's already responsive so keep in mind that whenever uh, you want to make it responsive for mobile make sure to have these widths and heights so the way you add dynamic width and height basically you might want to add like a use effect wherein whenever the window width changes you basically you basically trigger that and then change the width of this dynamically so you could do something like that or if you have any doubt i think they have a proper like guide here so maybe you could follow up the docs and yeah if you have any doubt make sure to comment down i'll be happy to help and yeah that's it for this video hope this is helpful um yeah meet you guys in the next video till then bye bye take care